Hello, thank you, Alice. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, welcome, everybody. Um, so I will um, discuss about 3D printing and, uh, and the medical field. Um, I'm Berthier Luit. I run a company called Le Fab Shop. Um, it stands for Fabrication Workshop. Uh, we have, this design studio is based here, and uh, uh, you're welcome to visit uh, any time. Uh, our business is to distribute 3D printing and document 3D printing. Uh, we just published a book about 3D printing. Uh, we release a lot of things on our website. Uh, we study materials for 3D printing. And um, let's jump into it. So 3D printing is a set of different technologies. Um, for, I don't know, in the room, who has seen a 3D printer before? OK, almost half the room. So there are three main technologies. Uh, the first one on the left is called FDM. It stands for Fuse Deposition Modeling. Basically, it's a um, filament of plastic that will be deposited layer by layer to create a 3D shape. Um, it's the most uh, inexpensive uh, way to uh, 3D print something. Uh, this technology used to worth in the tens of thousands of, uh, of dollars. And now a machine like this worth less than $3,000. Uh, so it's very affordable for anybody who wants to innovate. The second, uh, the, the second technology uh, is called SLA, stands for Stereo Lithography Apparatus. Basically, it's a, it's a range of machines that will use a resin um, and a UV light to cure it. So there is several ways to, um, to, to use this. Uh, this particular machine is worth probably another 3,000 uh, US dollars. This range of machines go up to a million um, uh, US dollars. Uh, it will be either a bath of a resin uh, on the surface of which there is a um, UV flash that will uh, flash every single layer of, uh, of the, the object to build, or it will be more like a jet uh, printer, like your inkjet printer, uh, droplets of, um, of uh, resin deposited uh, to, um, to build a 3D shape and a UV light, again, that will cure it, so uh, making it instantly uh, solid. Uh, what is interesting this, with this technique is, of course, uh, maybe some of you have been to the dentist lately and take uh, a mold of your, of your mouse. Uh, this is the same kind of resin. They are UV light cured. The, sec the last uh, type of machines on the, on the far... Uh, on the far right for you, um, is uh, machines that will use powders. Um, in this field, you find several types of powders. They could be uh, minerals, such as plaster. Uh, they could be polymers, plastics, or um, metals. And in terms of metals, that goes from um, uh, steel, stainless steel, um, but also titanium. And in the dental field, again, uh, chrome cobalt uh, alloy. Um, but also silver, gold, all these can be printed by this type of, type of machine. These machines are more pricey. The, the entry point is more in the range of 150,000 US dollars, and it goes very, um, it goes uh, way more expensive. What it, what's interesting in, um, in this range of machines is that, of course, you can uh, design anything. Uh, you can uh, build almost anything. In the case of the of this type of machine, since it's a big box of powder, you can actually work for several customers. Several, uh, you don't call your people customers, special. Uh, I don't know. Um, you can work for several um, clients at this, on the same on the same batch of fabrication. So uh, the cheap kind of machine, the first one, uh, the uh, FDM. Uh, is very affordable and it's uh, easy to run fast uh, IDs, uh, run them through um, uh, prototyping and uh, look for form factors or uh, try to solve an issue. This is a project that was published this week on, um, on the internet. It's actually that little girl has got uh, diabe uh, diabetes. She was diagnosed with uh, diabetes and uh, she needs monitoring for diabetes. And, uh, what our father thought about is connecting our diabetes monitor to a cell phone and actually build an enclosure where everything is packed 
And basically, the, the Dibet monitor will um, uh, send an SMS or a text message or an email to his parents in case uh, our, our sugar levels drop or in case, she, in case of danger of any kind. It was very inexpensive, that piece, that part, uh, um, aside from the work uh, it has taken to actually design it, uh, is probably less than two euros of, uh, or two dollars of plastic. So that is uh, what 3D printing is good at, actually um, uh, turning ideas into prototypes and prototypes into products. Uh, this is another thing that was published this week. That, uh, that team has been working on um, uh, stitching wounds uh, after the operation, and they designed a little device, which is actually uh, a stitching machine for uh, the surgery block. He designed it in 3D he, with uh, the, uh, the resin printer. He can print really uh, small parts with uh, tolerances of the range of the five microns. So he could design a really precise uh, mechanic uh, and design a new tool, and um, he could iterate really quickly between the ID and the final product. And uh, you can find this online, and there is a video which shows actually uh, how it works. So to 3D print anything, you have to have a 3D printing file. And there is two kinds of files, the ones you design, such as industrial design like this, or the case I shown you before, and the other one, is a 3D scan. And of course, in the medical field, this is a 3D scan. Uh, in architecture, we will use another 3D scan. In, uh, in some shops right now in Paris, you can actually get a 3D scan of yourself and get a mini figurine of yourself. Um, but this is actually a 3D scan. And the data you collect here is a 3D model. And just like 3D printing is uh, putting layers and slices of material one on top of the other, uh, this is really uh, what we are talking about. And what this allows is actually to see things that, are, that were never seen before. There is in the brain something called the white matter. Oh, disclosure, I have no expertise in the medical field at all. I try not to go to, to, to doctors. Uh, but so one of my friends showed me this. It's actually based on a 3D scan. This is the white matter inside the brain. Uh, to what I understand, this is liquid. So as soon as you open a, a brain, it goes away. So there was a digital file where you could see it, but thanks to 3D printing, now you can actually touch it and, um, and make a, a visualis visualization of it that was unprecedented. So let's uh, talk a little bit more. So there are all kinds of scanners. Of course, dentists have, uh, have scanners uh, that are used for um, studying the mouse. Uh, in this case, uh, the, the idea is to actually analyze the bone structure to see if there is enough bone to put, um, to put an implant for, uh, uh, for providing that uh, patient uh, with a new tooth. So in the, the medical field, all the mold industry is revolutionized with, uh, with this technique. Uh, you see on these plates, there are probably three different customers. Um, uh, clients, whatever, uh, uh, patients. Um, but you can imagine these machines working for hundreds of customers at, at, uh, at once. And um, lowering the cost of uh, every uh, single print and making multiple, um, working for most multiple uh, patients at once. So 3D printing is also good for fixing and uh, repairing. So basically, this is X-ray, the old way to actually see what's inside our body. Um, plus a 3D scan, you can actually design uh, on-demand, tailor-made casting, uh, which is lighter, which breathes better, and which is definitely more appealing. Um, but you can also analyze the bone structure and prepare uh, guides for uh, oper the operation, and that will reduce the dramatically the uh, uh, operation time. Uh, you, will have, you will need to uh, uh, open the, the patient less, it will, uh, he will lose less blood, and you will have, uh, he will recover fa faster. Basically, on this picture on the, le on the left, uh, there is a, a bone, um, obviously a bone default, and the, op the, the point of the operation was to actually um, uh, fix that bone, so it was uh, the, the, the guide on the left is for uh, drilling, and the guide on the right is for cutting. 
And well, that's all the operation. And the whole idea is to put the brush, I don't know how you call this, to fix the bone and put it back into the position you, uh, you, that will benefit the patient. Uh, in that case, that's another uh, bone study. That uh, woman, it's an operation that took place uh, about three years ago now. Uh, it's an old lady that had um, uh, his uh, bottom jaw bone um, infected, and she had a bone replacement, and that's a titanium bone made on demand, on measure, for her mouse. So we jump into the field of prosthetics, and uh, of course, cheap, this is printed on a probably a $1,000 3D printer. But suddenly, I don't know if I put the, the picture, but okay, it was made for a little boy uh, who was born without a hand. And uh, at the age of eight, his father got a 3D printer, designed this, fixed it to his arm, and for the first time in his life, he could grab a ball. And this is inexpensive, this is open source, this is available online. You can go to different websites, download this file, and adapt it to your kid, to, your, to, to yourself, or to whoever uh, would need it. It's so inexpensive that I, right now, uh, this week, uh, the Boy Scouts of America starts producing these kinds of prosthetics to distribute to, uh, to people in need. And in Sudan, uh, where there is uh, a lot of wars, there is another program to provide 3D printed uh, prosthetics to uh, people in need after the, the, they lost their um, uh, members uh, in, um, in war or, or other um, events. That's one of our friends, he's called uh, Nicola. Nicola lost his hand about 10 years ago. He was, uh, he was working, um, uh, he was a soldering, in a, in a workshop, and there was an electric shock, and he lost his hand. For the last 10 years, Nicola has been wondering what he could uh, do with his life. Probably not too much, very handicapped. Uh, Nicola, two years ago, turned to a fab lab, a fabrication laboratory, which where he, he ran into people working on a robotic hand for humanoid robots. And uh, so he learned the basics of 3D printing, and programming and robotics, and his end is altogether less than 300 euros. We have another friend, I'm sorry I don't have his picture here, uh, Fabrice, he lost his end uh, four years ago, and he now got a $40,000 uh, prosthetic. So there is a lot of, in this field, there is a lot of progress to be done, but obviously uh, there is a, a chance for people like Nicola who uh, really three years ago his future was pretty bl blurred. Now he can actually, he's a superstar. He travels the world with his hand and, uh, and he's, he's a super cool guy. Uh, and his future has changed dramatically because he could access a 3D printer and some, ex and some uh, mechanics, electronics, sorry. So again, with a 3D model, uh, in this case for reconstruction, you can actually uh, install uh, a connector to the bone, to, the, to the, what's remaining of the bone, and design a full prosthetic uh, for, uh, for a patient. Um, actually, Fabrice, the guy I was mentioning with the $40,000 arm, which is carbon fiber robotics, it's insane. I don't know if you, uh, you've seen that uh, design anime called Cobra back in the days. You could, you could basically put any tool to, the, to, uh, to his hand. It's insane. And it's that insane that actually he told me that the laboratory who provide these uh, uh, limbers, this, uh, the, this uh, arm, and uh, they are so advanced, and, they, and the, 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 the strengths they give to people, they actually have volunteers that people want their arm cut off so they can have a, a robotic arm instead of their real arm. This is starting to be crazy. But following on this, then you can make good-looking prosthetics and change people's life. And uh, myself, I've seen people I, was, um, uh, I arrived in Denver uh, last year, and I saw a GI, ex-GI, walking with two of these alone. No, no cradles, no nothing. He's back on the shoulder and completely self-autonomous. So this is crazy. And we can go crazier. This happened uh, earlier this year. It's a full skull transplant. And that man here lost half of his face in an accident. And uh, with a little work, he will, re he will have a face that people can 
look at him without being disturbed, and um, he can, uh, he, he can uh, uh, connect to the world again. So this is happening right now. This is not future, this is right now. So of course, in the field of uh, facial reconstructions, you can imagine a lot of uh, spare parts, replacement parts. Um, that's another example um, of face reconstruction. In the orthopedic field, I'm sorry, I'm, uh, my time is limited, so I, I just uh, move on. Uh, you, um, you can make things on demand, tailor-made for you, for any individual. This is personalized. So the process is very easy. Basically, it's another scan of the foot, uh, design a model, and 3D print the proper sole for your shoes. Uh, in radiotherapy, this is a shield. It's made to limit the amount of uh, rays going to the, to the patient, and actually it protects what the, the, um, the, the body of the, pa the patient and allows the, the rays to go exactly where the surgeon wants it to go. And that is the big thing now. This is 3D bioprinting. Because the scale goes so, so small, you could, you've heard about 2D cell culture for skin. We actually, well, uh, research is now into 3D printing tissues. So you can actually uh, print tissues with blood vessels into it and, um, and um, eventually think about doing uh, cartilage, organs, and all, uh, and all, um, all sorts of new uh, uh, replacement parts, basically. So this is a uh, blood vessel uh, 3D printing. This is uh, a sugar solution and uh, bio cells. The, good, the, the idea uh, that is uh, developed by a company called Organovo in San Francisco is actually that uh, they are using your own body cells to grow new organs for replacement. So my, my take on this is that within 15 years, your insurance company will ask you for a cell sample and provide you with replacement organs on demand. Thank you.